one. He remembered Dr. Brown's last words. Have you missed something? Yes. Over bourbon sitting on his couch, Kashi was relentlessly over a deep thought. The embers were flaring inside the fire hole underneath gray stone tiles. The crackling sound from the burning logs were just music. The outside world was enamored in foggy silence. Not even crickets or night owls were buzzing tonight, just the embers. One more sip, and Kashi was reminded of the last advice given by a senior scientist and mentor Mr. Brown. Dr. Brown was more than an old professor. He was a friend who would go to extreme lengths for each other. One time his car broke down in the middle of the road, and the first name for him to dial was Kashi. The bonding was friendly, but with deep respect. Kashi would never drink in front of Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown was never aware if Kashi would ever drink. Kashi loved music, but tonight he was planning in his appointed mansion a few yards from the laboratory. A thought trickled to play rock music, but he had a mission to execute in a couple of months or else travesty. He plucked a blank sheet of paper from his coat pocket on the back of his recliner. He just threw his coat when he arrived on recliner, poured Tennessee bourbon, and lit a fire. As he sat on the comfy seat of soft leather beneath his thighs, he emerged from drinking to meditating and now reading. S-C-I-N-T-I-T-S. Kashi laughed so hysterically that many crickets otherwise foggily silent woke up. He remembered Dr. Brown's last words when he parted. Have you missed something? Kashi now realized what his old man meant. He was obviously missing a letter. All sorts of images brightened his imaginations, but his grin was unintentionally for his brethren all around the world. How could they have missed obvious treatment for this deadly virus which engulfed the world? Long time back a hundred years ago, during the same months, soldiers wounded or healthy were dying mysteriously. After a decade of research, a lady, while eating with her father, formulated a drug known as artemisinin. Her trials were never recognized by the Allies until this decade because those being test subjects were treated. The verification process was very lengthy. Kashi was waiting for his moment to strike gold with Artemisinin. Civilization was collapsing around the world. The news broke within hours of the zombie apocalypse. The most remote or distant geographical places unimaginable by doctors were engulfed in days. Doctors were inclined towards the tests, and succumbing to the disease left right and center. Last day his voice mail for peer review reached the ears of the most prolific businessman. However, he was inclined on the chemical compound way more cheaper than artemisinin. Kashi never cared, though. His grin was as wide as before when a businessman contacted Hump. It was just a day before yesterday. For two hours, the world seemed heaven after Kashi woke from slumber to listen to businessmen discussing over their phones. Kashi let the dreamlike opportunity turn into direct conflict just three hours later. Rich and prolific businessmen wanted Kashi to agree with him. He waited for his sign of approval within a couple of hours. Kashi, as usual, went for science rather than money being doled out by that savvy gentleman. He would have made fortunes if and only if he would agree. Kashi still felt like his formulation will strike gold. His brethren were still providing test kits just to make sure that symptoms were positive. The Center for Communicable Verity and Diagnosis most revered in the world, which Kashi and Dr. Brown were part of went with diagnosis kits at this stage. They held the world's most deadliest venom and antidotes research in their lab. Labs. Dr. Brown was against Kashi ideas too. He aligned towards his ex organization manifestos and our collective boss's plan to tackle the grim situation. Yet Kashi was now the boss. Though Kashi digressed from the textbook plan of action, which Dr. Brown was earlier part of in his youth, he let his prodigy act with his devices. 
The moment in the lap, Kashi seemed sad when he heard success. But after a few drinks and solitude as gold, and plan seemed well planned and meticulously godly. Dr. Brown was helping this particular young blood because he held his vision and yet pulled out magically a different volume. This game has never been played in history. Recorded past missions from a hundred years span has never seen a single instance of what Kashi has accomplished as a boss. With his mantle under his leadership, he has accomplished so much within the past few years' strategies so innovative, miraculous yet world-class as fuck. Kashi thought this might be the single reason Dr. Brown is assisting him in his research and development. He had taught for many years after retiring from his active service. He dropped his cap in the closet a decade ago. As Kashi joined the Center for Communicable Viridi and Diagnosis, it hardly took him a year to progress as a boss. He had picked everything for the past three and four years. As success eluded him in those several years, but his management style was remarkable in history and catapulted him into such a high position that the old boss had to renounce his retirement to work with Kashi full-time. 